This video is sponsored by Squarespace. It's no secret that contrast paints and speed paints have changed the world of miniature painting. And after dominating the market for the past four years, surely there wouldn't be a glaring hole in Games Workshop's lineup, right? Contrast paint and metallic paints are two of the fastest speed painting products in the game. So think about how much faster we could paint if you could combine the two together. Today, let's talk about how to make your own DIY metallic contrast and speed paints for your next Slap Trap army, or discover if there's a reason this type of paint doesn't exist already. Now you might be saying, Lila, these paints do exist. Army Painter came out with metallic speed paints when they released Army Painter Speed Paints 2.0. But did they? One of the biggest selling points of contrast paints and speed paints is that they sink into the recesses thereupon darkening them to look like shadows. Army Painter's metallic speed paints don't. Second, contrast paints and speed paints have held their popularity because of a technique called slap trap, or in general, underpainting, basically where you paint your highlights and shadows with black and white beforehand and then apply your pure color using these translucent colors. This is something that Army Painter metallics also don't do. And while not all contrast paints do this, I wish they all did. So with these ideas in mind, let's talk about the goals for this project. We want to create a metallic speed paint that sinks into the recesses to create our shadows, has a good coverage in a single coat, shows our underpainting, and of course, looks metallic. Before making this video, I did hours and hours of testing and narrowed it down to a handful of recipes I want to share with you today. Before we begin, let me know down in the comments, what's your favorite fast way to paint metallics? To start, I'm Zenitha highlighting my models using black on some models and magenta on others. My hope is that the magenta will help sell our gold better than a black underpainting. If you don't have an airbrush, I go over everything you need to know about applying your Slap Shop Zenithal in this video here. Let's talk her DIY. Contrast paints. My first contrast attempt was half a brushful of ball red to three brushfuls of imperial yellow, mixed with a small dollop of metallic medium from Vallejo. The metallic medium is very thick, so one has to be careful when mixing it with contrast paints or the paint won't be able to flow into the recesses like we want it to. While we paint, let's talk about scoring. One, for the recesses, it did okay. I would have liked darker recesses, but there's enough for me to at least count it. Two, good coverage in a single coat. It went on smooth and didn't show any brush strokes. It gave an even yellow finish across the model, but I just don't like it. It performed exactly how I would expect Imperial Fizz Yellow to perform, but for this, it just isn't enough. Perhaps if this model had been underpainted with magenta, it would have been better. Is the underpainting visible? Check. Does it look metallic? Absolutely not. It just looks like a yellowish contrast paint with glitter. Time to give my brain a break. Let's talk about Squarespace. I have dreams of painting box art, so having a website that makes my work look great is vital. Squarespace offers beautiful templates that I can easily customize to my needs, and with Squarespace's drag and drop features using Fluid Engine, I can make my website look good on a laptop or, most importantly for me, mobile. I can even sell custom merchandise that creates a passive income stream that engages my friends and fans and scales with my brand. When you're ready to start your website, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash lilamev and use code lilamev to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, back to painting. My second attempt at contrast paints included several brushfuls of Imperial Fifth Yellow, one of Bald Red, and two of Grihenna's Gold, as well as one medium to help with the thick consistency of the layer paint. With the help of the medium, it worked just fine, but this one is definitely the most effort I've had to do thus far. All right, scoring. The recesses look a lot better in this version. 
I love the deep, gorgeous gold that has sunk into the recesses. The coverage on this is pretty terrible. It's incredibly splotchy and uneven, which is such a shame because it looks quite metallic. Honestly, if we could get the coverage more even, this one may be perfect. As for underpainting, you can just barely see it. But I'm thinking that my goal of having a translucent finish while also being metallic might be hard to balance. Army Painter. The base for my Army Painter mixture is the Hopalite Gold Speed Paint. It has the perfect consistency for this type of work, and I won't have to worry about using any medium to get it there. I'm mixing one drop of Ancient Honey, one drop of Hopalite Gold, and two of Ruddy Fur to create my mixture. The Ancient Honey is keeping the paint in the yellow family, and the Ruddy Fur is adding the darkness I want in the recesses. The Army Painter Speed Paint mixture sunk into the recesses exactly how I wanted it to, and the Ruddy Fur really helped darken down those areas so that all of my details popped. The coverage is a lot better on this one. It is very even and not splotchy whatsoever, exactly as I would expect from an Army Painter Speed Paint. The underpainting is just barely visible, but it is enough to really add the definition and highlights and shadows that I'm looking for on this model. Unfortunately, once again, this is more glitter than metallic. Though the Army Painter Speed Paints are a great consistency, it looks like when they are diluted, the metallic parts begin to separate into individual glitter pigments. Overall though, this one is definitely in the lead. The final concoctions. This time around, I'm not worrying about brand. I'm just worrying about using the best mixtures I can to achieve our goal. I love the Army Painter Speed Paint mix. It just wasn't metallic as I want. So I'm going to start with that mixture as my base and see if we can increase that shine. Let's start from the beginning. I'm mixing one drop of Huge Miniatures Metallic Gold, one drop Army Painter Hopalite Gold, and three drops of Ruddy Fur. I'm also creating a second batch of the same mixture plus a drop of water with dish soap to help with the consistency of the Huge Miniatures Gold Paint. Why soap and water? It's an old DIY thinning agent and I absolutely could have used medium. I just didn't think about it. All right, let's look at how we did. Both versions settled into the recesses, but the version with the soap settled more intensely. So this one goes to the one with soap. The coverage is good on both options, but again, the version with the soap spread a lot more evenly while the version without soap gathered in a few areas, leaving splotchy patches. Again, this one goes to the soap version. For both of these, I think that they were the perfect opacity to allow our underpainting to show through, while still being more metallic than any of the other mixtures. But before we talk about our winner, there is one other thing we must do. Not only are we comparing our contrast speed paint to each other, but also to the tried and true standard of painting a metallic layer and then a wash on top. Shh, shh, shh. All right, with all that in mind, let's talk about the final results. Amongst all of my metallic contrast speed paint mixtures, the winner is the last speed paint concoction using soap. The water and soap really did make a difference in how the metallics settled across the model. But the more important question is how does it do compared to the metallic paints and a wash? Well, if your goal is that you just want the shiniest, most metallic option available, then you can't beat metallic paints with a wash on top. However, this technique does come with its own downsides. Washes tend to collect strangely in edges, they pool in large open areas and can leave coffee staining. All things that did not happen while using my speed paint concoction. However, on the other hand, you do have to create your own speed paint concoction. And if you wanna do a recipe other than gold, you're gonna have to do experimentation on your own 
and it's not as metallic as I would have liked. However, if you're willing to put the effort up front to be able to apply metallic paints in just a single coat with the highlights and shadows that we're after, then my Speed Peak Concoction is the winner. So what do you think? Was Games Workshop right to ignore this paint color? Do you think my recipe fills the niche, or should Games Workshop and Army Painter work to improve or create their own metallic speed paints? Alright, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, go join me on Patreon. Thanks so much, I'll see you next time.